This Monday, a four-week hearing against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange opened in London. The hearing began with District Judge Vanessa Baretza dismissing Assange's lawyer's objection to newly introduced U.S. prosecution evidence accusing him of recruiting hackers to steal military secrets. Later, a request from Edward Fitzgerald QC to adjourn the extradition case on the grounds that the defence had not had sufficient time to gather evidence relating to the new U.S. indictment was also refused. John Rees of the Don't Extradite Assange campaign in the UK stressed the political context behind the persecution of Julian Assange and its implications for press freedom. Well, I'm here representing the Don't Extradite Assange campaign, which is the uh, official WikiLeaks campaign to stop Julian being taken to the United States. And we're here today because this is now the final few weeks of uh, the first part, I guess, of what will be the extradition process. And uh, we're here to make an elementary point that um, Julian Assange isn't a spy and therefore shouldn't be subject to an espionage act, that he's a journalist, that he's on trial because he offended the United States by telling the truth about the Iraq and Afghan wars, and that those kind of characters should be protected in our society, not victimized by it. And political activist and writer John Rees also stressed the implications of the trial against Assange for the British judicial system. Well, I, I think most people, you know, they, they, most people who live in this country, been brought up in this country with a kind of certain um, attitude towards the judiciary, certain expectations of the judiciary. And I think that anybody who's grown up with that in this country would be horrified if they knew the detail of this case so far. For a defendant not to be able to see his legal team for months on end, most people would think that would be irregular in the first place. Most people actually would be surprised that a globally significant political case like this was being tried in a magistrate's court which frankly normally deals with motoring offences. Um, so, um, and then they would be surprised I think to hear that the access of NGOs like Amnesty International and of journalists and of members of the public has been severely restricted. We have a principle in this country that there's no justice without open justice and that has clearly been breached in this case. So I think on a number of very, very important points, most people would be very surprised that this is how the court is conducting itself. And as mentioned, the extradition hearing of WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange resumed this Monday at the Central Criminal Court of England and Wales in London. Assange is facing a potential sentence of 175 years in prison for publishing US government documents revealing evidence of war crimes and human rights abuses. In the following report, we take a look at the case and its international impact. It is July 12, 2007. An Apache helicopter flies over an area of eastern Baghdad the aircraft crew requests permission to attack a group of people walking on the streets. They claimed that the target was armed, but nobody was attacking the helicopter. From the air, the attackers are not seen. The weapons are activated so rapidly that people get killed immediately. Among them, children and workers of the international media. They did not carry weapons of any kind, only TV equipment. These images and others hidden by the intelligence community of the United States, were known to the world when the U.S. military Chelsea Manning gave them to WikiLeaks, Julian Assange organization. WikiLeaks published the 38-minute footage on April 2010, as well as an edited version called Collateral Damage. A potential war crime hidden by the Pentagon was known thanks to a small organization willing to disclose state secrets based on the information provided by anonymous citizens. Chelsea Manning, a former intelligence private in the U.S. Army, provided the information that confirmed the illegal actions of the United States Armed Forces and its allies in the invasions of Iraq and Afghanistan. She was then arrested in May 2010 and convicted by a military court in 2013. The former U.S. President Barack Obama, after hunting down Assange, granted Manning a partial pardon. The long and complex Assange case began in 2010 with the revelation of hundreds of thousands of classified documents that showed U.S. committed war crimes and corruption in the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. The first and surprising counterattack on Assange was the complaint filed against him in Sweden for alleged rape and sexual abuse. 
Stockholm requested the extradition of Assange, who was arrested by the British police and then released him on bail. Afterwards, Assange applied for political asylum at the Embassy of Ecuador in London. Since that moment, Assange has been a victim of political and diplomatic battles. In one side, Sweden pressured him to have him under its jurisdiction, the United States demanding to have him extradite, and the United Kingdom supporting Washington. Finally, a surprising and accelerated turn to the right of the Ecuadorian government ended up allowing the British police to enter the embassy. After years of illegal watching of Assange's every move while the Australian hacker stayed at the diplomatic headquarters, in April last year, the English police arrested him there and since then has been detained in a prison of maximum security. The second extradition process had to begin in April. It was delayed because of the pandemic. The United States took this time to add new charges to the 18 counts that he was already facing. The message from the State Department is a warning to anyone willing to disclose dark government operations. It will follow them until the end of the planet. Assange's defense team listed a number of irregularities and violations of his rights that should prevent an extradition. These irregularities were all informed in a letter to the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, which was signed by more than 150 prominent lawyers and legal organizations of the world. The defense attorneys included in the list that under the Article 4 of the extradition agreement between the US and the UK, it is forbidden to extradite someone for political reasons. It is also banned if there is a risk of having an unfair trial, which means without the minimum guarantees of fairness established in the rule of law. They also recall the risk of torture reported by the United Nations Special Representative on this matter. And finally, the violation of freedom of press and expression due to the fact that this process prosecutes as a crime the publishing of government information. The chase against these activists is one of the most fierce campaigns that has ever been developed against a person for telling the truth about the death and destruction committed by the interventionist policies of the United States and its allies, and at the same time saving thousands of lives by discovering Washington global domination brutalities. If Assange is finally extradited, it will be a confirmed death sentence and the implied warning that those who want to stop the U.S. atrocities by publishing them must remain silent.